spine and we'll go to the sacral chakra next. So this chakra is located about an inch or two below your belly button. And this is your center of creativity, sexuality, life force energy, joy, pleasure, connection with other people. So we want this chakra working well so that you can be having a good time in your life. Uh, the color of this chakra is orange, is the traditional color. So I like to work with orange and red stones. But by the way, I just wanna kind of backtrack on that a little bit. What I learned in crystal healing is it's always a safe bet to match the color of the stone to the color of of the chakra and you're going to have a good effect but i want to say there's many cases where there's stones that are a completely different color than the chakra that will still work very well there so that's not a hard and fast rule and also also um, i would usually suggest that you follow your own intuition about where certain stones want to go and not a little formula like that Does i think that that's a good that's a good point because yesterday we had a uh a show on where we were talking about 30 ways that you, we're wired differently than most people. And I think that <clears throat> that would, that would be one of the ways too. where, for example, one of the, one of the examples I gave was I was um, diagnosed with ADHD and I was given uh, Adderall and Adderall being, you know, an, an amphetamine would usually amp people up. Right. But for me, I could take a Adderall and go to sleep an hour later. I'm wired differently as are probably 99% of the people watching this right now. So that's, that's good advice that you had to, you know, use your own discernment. If you find a stone, you know, say I've got this quartz crystal and I want to place right. it on my throat, you know, instead yes. of lapis lazuli or whatever, you know, go with it. And I think that's wonderful advice. Thank Absolutely. you for bringing that up. Like trust yourself more than any little formula because you will be guided. If you um, are coming with this with the right intention that you're wanting to use these crystals and work with them to create a positive outcome, they will guide you where they need to go. And there's many times when I have them all different than you know matchy match with the colors. So is it kind of like being an alchemist and especially when you're making a grid, you know, experimenting, placing, you know, all right, this pie right here and this crystal there, and then maybe switching it around or putting them in different places. Do you find that it gives you different results each time? It does. It does. So it, it really is kind of an art form and a science at the same time when you're working with crystals. And it's a lot of listening and feeling and trusting too. Right. So Awesome. All right. All right. So yeah, so I'll get back to it. Let's see. So we were talking about the color is typically orange, but for instance, like, you know, I oftentimes like to put moonstone on the sacral chakra and mostly that's white. So, you know, uh, so that's just a general rule. So the glands that at this chakra and symptoms that you might have an issue or a blockage here, um, difficulty experiencing joy and pleasure or a feeling of a lack of energy flow, just feeling drained and fatigued. Uh, if your sacral chakra is in overdrive, you might be overly emotional or overly sexual, but if there's a blockage, you might have a low libido. Um, also, addictions can live in the sacral chakra as well as codependency issues, right? So uh, the first one I wanna talk about for the sacral is carnelian. I don't know if you can see how beautiful this one is. This is a very beautiful carnelian. And okay, my little, I have this little alien carnelian guy who just wanted me to, he wanted to say hi to everybody. <laughs> I saw him in a dream and then I found him online and bought him. All right. So carnelian is fantastic. Does he have a name? Did you name uh, him? This one hasn't given, he hasn't given me a name yet. Most okay. of my skulls have. Wow. This one, pff, I don't know yet. <laughs> but okay. he came first in a dream and then he came into my life. So um, carnelian is a wonderful stone for clearing, opening, and activating the sacral chakra, um, really getting those juices flowing with creativity, sexuality, vitality. Um, it's a really happy and vibrant stone, and it kind of is like crystalline fire. And uh, fire is interesting because it can clear and it can transmute, it can burn away blockages, but fire is also an energizing force. So if you are feeling 
totally drained and fatigued and lethargic, like you can't get off the couch. Sometimes I feel like that. Before you just drink a bunch of coffee, maybe try working with uh, some carnelian and see if it can boost your energy levels. It's a happy stone. It's very optimistic and it helps with inspiration. Uh, especially if you're having a creative block, it can bring in a flow of ideas. It's a stone of, that helps you get through your resistance and it moves you into action. Uh, so if you have all these great ideas, but you don't seem to have the energy to make them happen, work with this stone. It'll actually, uh, it'll, it'll push you into a little bit more action. Um, now, I am really impressed with carnelian as a healing stone of all things. This stone can boost the functioning of many systems of your body, especially the reproductive system, the lymphatic system, the endocrine system, and the immune system. And let me tell you a little story about that. Like, I signed up to take a class in Portland, Oregon with Gemisphere. It was a crystal class, and I was so excited. I showed up there, and I got so sick. I felt like I had strep throat. I had pus on the back of my throat. It felt like I was swallowing razor blades. I had no energy. I thought I was going to die. I showed up at the class. I was wrapped up in a blanket, just laying on the ground, just trying to absorb something. And then we finally got to the point where we were talking about carnelian and they had us put on a very high quality necklace of carnelian. So I was wearing that necklace within 15 minutes, all of my symptoms went away. It was like a miracle. Uh, my throat didn't hurt anymore. I, I sat back up. I started dancing around. I ran and looked at the, my throat in the mirror. There was no sign of an infection. So that's how quickly a high quality carnelian can boost your immune system and help you to get over something. I was blown away by that. And the other thing about carnelian, it's really a common stone. So it's affordable. Like you can get tumbled pieces of carnelian for like 50 cents. So Everybody should get some carnelian. How do you know what a high quality carnelian is though? I've ah, yeah. So um, you want to look at the clarity, like how translucent it is. And then also like the saturation of the color. If it's like a very like vibrant kind of color, it's more about the color and the clarity. And okay. so um, with Gemisphere, uh, their website is gemisphere.com and they actually, um, sell the highest quality of gemstones and they they actually have their gemstones rated on a scale of the quality and they price it accordingly the price can be a little bit high but let me tell you their necklaces work <laughs> so okay. um but yeah even a 50 cent pe pretty piece can do you a lot of good okay. yeah all right so another stone for the sacral chakra that i think is really interesting and helpful is uh cuprite okay so here's a cuprite I don't know how well you can see it, but it's- How do you spell that? Stone. It's C-U-P-R-I-T-E. Okay. And uh, so it's this opaque kind of deep red stone and it is it has a high copper content. It's one of those copper stones I was talking about. Here it is in combination with um, chrysocolla. Look how beautiful that is. So these two often grow together. So the red part is the cuprite. Um, now, I think this one's important because it's the perfect stone uh, when you are going through a transition in your life or some kind of a rebirth, uh, it helps you to move into a new phase. And I think that that's what a lot of us are going through right now. Even as a collective, uh, we're moving into a new phase of reality. Individually, we're going into new phases of our life. Um, this stone is going to help you to finish up your old business, uh, clear what you need to clear, and then it's going to give you extra energy to um, reinvent yourself in a new way. So it's very exciting. So like I said, it's a copper bearing stone and stones with copper, you can stick that right over a chakra and it's going to suck the blockages right out of that chakra. The kind of blockages that um, cuprite can really help us with would be to release deep fears or any kind of traumatic experiences, especially if it was a sexual trauma that you've gone through in this life or even in other lifetimes. Um, they can help us with clearing masculine and feminine um, issues 
and I think we're doing a lot of work with the divine masculine and feminine right now, um, blocks to creativity and any kind of power issues. The stone is going to really get in there and clear that stuff out. I also like it because it has a resonance with the divine feminine frequencies, the, the female mysteries, magic and alchemy. In fact, it's even, I haven't tried this yet, but maybe one of you guys will. Um, you're supposed to be able to meditate with this stone and it can help you tap into the DNA level of your maternal line so that you can tap into the wisdom and gifts of the whole family line. Um, it's really good for men and for women to help you to tap into your female side, your receptive nature, to get more in tune with the natural rhythms and cycles of life. And if you're a female who is going through um, hormonal issues, this is going to really help you with your reproductive system, PMS, menstrual problems, or if you're going through that transitional phase of life of perimenopause or menopause, this is going to give you a lot of help and relief. So Cuprite. That's one that I just wanted you guys to know about because it's not quite as common, but it's a really dynamic stone. In addition to that, I forgot to mention that it's super energizing because of the copper. The copper is going to replenish you and um, it's just going to really boost the functioning of that chakra to a higher level for people who need it to work in that way. Sound good? Yeah. All right. well, I got a question for you though. Um, sure. You were saying that cuprite helps on the DNA level. I've been trying to work on my codons. Um, we have Ooh. 44 codons in our DNA that are not activated, and I'm trying to figure out ways to activate them. Right. How would I use cuprite in trying to activate my codons? Yeah, now that's a good question. It's something that I haven't really tried to do yet. Um, I don't know. I think the first way I would approach it is to realize that the crystals and stones are conscious mm -hmm. and that. Um, it's good to communicate with your stones and tell them what it is that you're trying to accomplish. In your case, it is to accomplish the activation of the dormant codons that would be useful for you at this time. Um, so the first thing I would do is just make your intention very clear and like ask the stone to assist you with that. Then maybe you would wanna sit with the stone and see if the stone would give you any instructions about where to place it or any specific technique that it would suggest so that it's kind of a co-creative effort. So um, I would just be open to playing with it in that way. And maybe, I don't know why, but I'm feeling like if you put it on maybe the higher chakras, it might work well for there. I don't know why all of a sudden I'm getting a hit that like the, um, the Soma chakra that's kind of right here at the hairline, which wasn't a chakra I was gonna talk about today. There's a chakra right here that I'm feeling like putting the right stones might help with the codons. Um, I'm also getting a hit about another copper bearing stone called Quantum Quattro, which is one that I was not going to talk about today. But look, let's see, I have my tray of crystals right here. Let me see if I can find one. Ba, ba, ba. Here's a Quantum Quattro. This is another copper bearing stone. This one has four copper bearing minerals. It's got um, Chrysocolla, Shatakite, uh, Dioptase, and Azurite. And it's in a matrix of smoky quartz. And this one is specifically known to help with DNA activation and activation of more of your abilities. So this one might be another, I'm just, for some reason, I feel like I wanted to tell you about that one as another one to try. Those two together might, might Okay. Work and try them both up there on, what was that chakra that you said? Um, I've heard it referred to as the Soma, S-O-M-A. Soma, okay. Yeah. I have another question too. And we're getting questions in from uh, the, the chat room, but they're not really sp chakra specific yet. So I've been writing them down and we'll get to them at the end. But um, if you have chakra specific ones, place them in there and I'll ask them while we're going. Um, the other one was you said uh, you let off with moonstone, which is very similar to opal. Would right. opal also be one or for, for that particular chakra or... Is that better for a different yeah. chakra? I think that opal would actually work very nicely for the sacral chakra because one of um, opal's gifts, one of its many gifts is to um, boost the creativity and your imagination and it and just to energize you in general. It's an energizing stone. So sure, I think that um, opal would be great on okay. the sacral. Yep. And Scott is asking, any thoughts on fire agate for Ooh. the sacral? Fire agate's another one I would uh, definitely recommend for the sacral. 
It's beautiful. It has that fiery, flashy, iridescent quality. It's very energizing, but grounding at the same time. Agates are wonderful. Um, they're just balancing, earthy, grounding, but that one's got that fire in it. And so, yes, okay. <laughs> good one. All right. I guess we can move on to the solar plexus. 